Hi, it's teardown time in glorious 4K resolution if you've got the option to watch it like that. Anyway, um, we've got a Western Digital uh, WD60 EFRX for those playing along at home. Uh, six terabyte Western Digital Red hard drive that I had in my NAS here. And if you've been following me on EV Blog 2, and you should be, because that's where I dump a lot of interesting videos. Um, and I'm almost, like, I'm only a couple of thousand away from 100,000 subscribers and getting that YouTube Silver Award. So, you know, please, oh, give me a sub on EV Blog 2. Anyway, if you've been following along the saga and on uh, Twitter as well, this is a drive that failed in my 4Drive uh, DS418 NAS Synology NAS drive. And it, basically, it's, it had been there for just over three years. Yes, it's literally one month out of warranty. It had like 26,000 hour, 26, operational hours, but technically, I looked at my old receipts, and yes, like one month out of the three-year warranty. Oh, anyway, everyone said that they wanted to see a teardown of this. So I might be able to still get like a warranty replacement for it. Maybe if I just, you know, fill out the form, maybe they'll send me a new one. But anyway, a lot of people wanted to see it. So I'm going to sacrifice this puppy because you do have to return them under warranty. So, and you can see the build date here, 18th of January 2018, but it has been in like 24-7 operation in my NAS, as I said, like 26,000 odd hour operational hours. The specific model we've got here, the EFRX, this is actually what's called a CMR, or Continuous Magnetic Recording Drive. It's the technology uh, used to actually write the bits onto the platters itself inside. And anyway, Western Digital, um, like they all were CMR, but then they sneakily, in their red series uh, drives, changed them to uh, SMR, or Shingled Magnetic Recording Drives, which isn't as good, and it's apparently much slower than CMR drives, because in Shingled Magnetic Recording, the uh, adjacent tracks actually overlap each other, hence why it's called Shingled, just like Shingled Roofs, you know, the Shingled uh, tiles overlap each other, and apparently when you write a, a byte to this, or a bit to this, you've got to actually write the two adjacent bits as well. Not this one, as I said, this is CMR, but the uh, EFAX version, which I did actually unknowingly have one of these in my Synology NAS uh, drive away. So yes, I am going to uh, eventually replace that, but I have to reconstruct or resync my drive first with a new CMR drive, which is on the way, and then I'll replace the SMR one I've got with the CMR. Anyway, um, it's actually the CMR one that failed, not the SMR, which a lot of people uh, claimed. So anyway, that was just like an interesting aside. Western Digital have now uh, admitted that they did that, and now uh, the new, the Reds are the SMR, and the Red Plus is actually uh, the CMR type. So the new ones have ordered uh, uh, Red Pluses. So anyway, let's do a teardown of this uh, bad boy and see, um, I will, uh, here's a video. I will uh, now try and record the sound from it, but unfortunately I just did that and it's not as bad as it was. But anyway, here's the video. Sound is nowhere near as bad as it was before. It's not sounding Normal could hear this right across the other side of my lab when when it was failed in the uh, NAS and normally you can't hear these things. Yeah, that's it's not as bad as it was, but it's still pretty bad. Like it should not be that loud. I haven't heard a hard drive that loud since like oh, the 1980s, 1990s. So anyway, here's the bottom of the drive for those playing along at home. There's no bodge wires. There we go. We've got uh, a flat flex going in there. That's to drive the motor. That's a four wire jobby. That's all gunked up. That's a, not a hard potting compound, not a soft one. Um, and, you know, do not block hole. It's got various vents or whatever. I haven't torn down a hard drive in oh, donkey's years. Anyway, um, are they like screws under there, warranty seal uh, screws or whatever? But And for those curious, no, there was no indication that this was going to fail. There was no bad sectors or anything like that. None of my other drives have any bad sectors. Um, so that's not an issue. Oh, that just, oh, that's that's nice. I like that. No cabling whatsoever. Just a board-to-board -board, uh, pressure uh, contact. Look at that. That's beautiful. Got some foam in there. It's just for some uh, anti-vibration uh, stuff so that the, uh, you know, board doesn't contribute to any vibration noise, I would uh, presume. So, yeah, I like that. So that's stuck down. Let's take that off. 
So yeah, no, no indications at all uh, that this thing was going to fail. All I heard about it was that all of a sudden I was writing some video to it because this NAS drive, I actually do uh, read, write, edit all of my video on this uh, NAS drive. I don't edit video locally. It's all done on my external NAS. And no, it's not slower um, to do that. Trust me, I've done videos on that. Anyway, yeah, so that's pretty cool. And we've got another uh, pressure contact over here on the uh, for the motor uh, drive as well. And they've got a... That's also buggering off into there, so that's interesting. I'm not sure why they're going off under there. Is there another... Uh, they're all in parallel, so... Uh. Anyway, there you go. There's the main board there. I've taken off the uh, thermal pad on top of that. So, like, I won't go into, into any details on the uh, chips or the design or anything like that, but that looks uh, very nice. No worries whatsoever. You can explore that in your heart's content in uh, 4K resolution. There you go. It just gives you some additional detail. I'm not sure you can see the part number on that, if anyone cares. All I want to see is the big uh, gouge taken out, hopefully um, taken out of the platter inside this thing, because when you get the grinding noises like that, the old click of death from these things, um, then yeah, that's the head doing some nasty business um, against the platters inside. I don't know how many platters these modern six terabyte drives use. I've got no idea. We'll find out. Take out that. Yep, there's the other screw. So I'll take out all of them. No, you only need one, don't you? <laughs> really? I mean, you can't, you know, you can take out every single screw to take this off. I guess it's just harder to uh, fake, you know, six of them instead of like five of them or whatever, instead of one. No. Now, of course, this is not something that you'd ordinarily do in a uh, just an, a normal uh, lab with normal air and stuff like that because if you get any uh, dust and crap in there, it, yeah, you'd want to do this in a relatively uh, clean air environment if you are like looking to get the data off it or repair it or do whatever. But yeah, not one care given here. But anyway, uh, yeah, you can probably see they've got some sort of gunky seal under there like that. So I've missed a screw. Under here. Oh, yeah, might have. Sneaky bugger. Yeah, there's another bloody another one under there. And this one looks like it's smack in the middle of the platter. That's kind of important. No, I thought that was another one under there. That's an air vent, is it? Yep, I'm pretty sure. That shiny thing in there is the platter. I'm sure there's some trick to this. I don't know, sorry. Don't uh, take this video as how to take apart hard drives. It's not my business. I did expect there to be a lot of force on that uh, rubber gasket holding it. Oh, yeah, 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 there you go. I think you need a big, wide-ass screwdriver like I'm using at the moment. That seems to be the go. Yeah, yeah, it seems to be popping. Okay. Yeah, can't use the little piss ant one I used before. Once the seal's off, yeah, it's done. Come on, you can do it. Ta-da! We're in like Flynn. Look at that. There's our platters. Geez, there are quite a few platters. Let's have a look on the bottom. There's some sort of pad, I guess, to stop it. I don't know if there is any vibration or wobble in there. I don't know. Like, a, you know, th th these are incredibly, probably the most complex mechanical device you own would be a hard drive. I, I think there's probably no doubt in that. All right, there you go. Yeah, that's our big rubber seal around the thing. It's like, oh, it's... Like, it's not even rubber, it's some sort of gel, kind of, I don't know. If anyone knows what type of stuff that is, yeah, let us know. And silly me, just put a mark on the uh, platter. There it is. That's the mark on the platter that, unfortunately, um, yeah, dumbass Dave, you probably scream at the camera, that came from this, which was, um, <laughs> yeah, don't do that. Anyway, good thing is I'm not trying to recover the data from this thing. Well, I don't see any damage to that top platter. I, yep, highly reflected these things, but um, no, I expect to see like some maybe some big grooves taken out of this thing somewhere. So there you go, you can see the entire platter. Of course, it's going, it's just going to reflect absolutely everything because these are the mirror finish on these is just absolutely incredible. And there's our head array, five, six um, arms on there. So that would be uh, 12 surfaces, so six platter, uh, 12 surface on there. So beautiful. And uh, yeah, there's a little parking frame over here for the heads. Very nice. And of course, like it, it, as I said, the technology which goes into these is absolutely 
incredible, the most precise engineered product uh, that you'll ever buy. It's just, like, <laughs> people don't realize the insane materials technology, the engineering, uh, the production technology that goes into making these hard drives. And six terabytes is, you know, not a big drive these days. You can get much bigger and denser and you can get them in smaller form factors and all sorts of things. Um, and yes, they do contain uh, very powerful neodymium magnets. So uh, yeah, you can get those out and have some fun down in there. You can see the coil, just a um, like a DC servo motor. These are all like, these aren't stepper motors, I believe. These are like, uh, you know, DC servo uh, controlled. And it's just I, like, I don't know the resolutions involved in something like this, but it's absolutely ridiculous. So I'm going to say not a huge amount in there, but a huge amount of technology goes into that. Um, it's just absolutely incredible. Anyway, unfortunately, Murphy says that the top of this disc does not have any marks. Of course it doesn't. So we're going to have to go further. But what I'll do is I'll actually plug it in like this, see if it does anything. Now, I assume that these are like filled with an inert uh, gas. Um, let me know in the comments down below. There we go. And there would be no um, sensor. I don't know. Would there be a pre and are they pressurized? Would there be a pressure sensor in there? Probably not. Oh, there we go. It's seeking. Ha <laughs> ha! Beautiful. Jeez, it sounds much louder without the uh, case on. Oh, it's going back to park. Oh, is that normal? I don't know. Does anyone know? But there you go. It's trying to do the business. It's trying to like read the exact point. Is that where it keeps the um, disc index or whatever? But yes, this, this drive does not work at all. And I think this is only like 5600 or 5200 RPM or something like that. It's not one of the fast jobbies. There you go. It's working, doing its thing, and it's just done. This shut down and it's going to stop spinning, stop spinning, stop spinning, stop spinning, because it's realized that uh, whether or not Windows shut that down or whether or not it's, uh, if it's done that of its own accord. If you do know that, leave it in the comments. But there you go. Um, yeah. It, I, don't know. I want to see the gouge. Oh. That's little on a little compliant mount. Maybe I can take that out. Oh, hello. Do we have a little desiccant bag in there? That's got to be a desiccant bag, right? <laughs> so, uh, yeah, to keep the moisture out of this sucker. Hmm. Aha, uh -huh, of course. That assembly there is just the interface from that uh, flat flex. It's just to hold the flat flex in place. It does absolutely nothing else. And then it, yeah, and then it just uh, folds over um, and goes over to the, uh, the the head. So that's all the head and motor drive. You can see the uh, the thicker traces in there versus the thin. Of course, the uh, I assume that the head amplifiers, you know, they're all going to be in there. It's not going to get um, all those teeny weeny little signals all the way back over here, I don't think. Now, I'm totally unsure how these platters come out, and I'm sure there's a lot of people who've disassembled these, and they're probably screaming at me, do this step, Dave, do this step, or whatever. I'm just going to wing it. Haven't looked at any guides. Have we got some screws on top there? So maybe we've got to take them out one by one Suck it and see. Once again, this is like, I don't care. I'm not trying to save data here. Woohoo! That's fun. Um, <laughs> I know you probably shouldn't do that, but, well, the heads are parked. Why not? As you'd probably expect, those are really Loctited. Oh, they're Loctited in there. Wow, tight as a nun's nasty. Actually, I don't see any evidence of Loctite on those. That's, um... It's rather surprising, although I guess you don't want <laughs> to be applying liquids around uh, hard drives like this in this sort of process. Jeez, oh, this is ridiculous. Yeah, imagine being the design engineer that actually proposes, oh, let's put some Loctite on those, and the production engineers are just going, what? Give me a break, you want us to put liquids around <laughs> these platters? Well, this is totally not fun, I can assure you. <laughs> Come on, bastard. It's got to be an easy way to do this. There's no, like, locking point that I can find. Anyway, I just took out that head parking thing and I did sort of uh, scrape the heads as I took them out. So, yeah, it's probably not the correct assembly step. There you go. There's the teeny tiny heads. Double-sided, of course. And, yeah, going to get medieval on its ass. Can they actually spring apart like that? Look at that, springy springy. Science that goes into the engineering that goes into the aerodynamics of these heads and how they 
uh, rest on the surface and stuff is, um, yeah, really something. We do actually have another seal on the bottom of the case under the PCB here. Let's take that off. Oh, there you go. That's the bottom of the platter. So that's rather interesting. That access is like, it's obviously something to do with uh, some sort of production testing, production alignment, uh, you know, inspection, you know, phys optically inspect the heads as they scan the surface or something like that. I don't know, anyone knows? Center of the platters here, and then the head, just uh, here's the head uh, motor here, and it just sweeps the head across like that. It's now got, ah, oh, oh, I got a fingerprint. Fingerprint! Oh no, it's ruined! Care factor zero at this point. So yeah, anyone know why that's there? Uh, let us know. Good news is it looks like I can unscrew the head assembly by taking this puppy off. Uh, then the, So the head assembly should now come out. Now unfortunately, the final screw in there seems to be uh, stripping. Okay, what I've done is looked at this uh, screw under the microscope and uh, like a T7 like it fits and it feels fantastic there is actually a tiny bit of play in it so and and a t8 doesn't fit so it's almost as if there's a t7.5 or one of those is there an imperial rubbish i don't know i've never encountered that um but yeah i cannot get that bloody last screw out and it, it's just stripping now with the t7 that got all the others out and of course i just noticed the two notches in there Clearly, there's a custom tool designed to go into the center and then hold in those two points to stop this sucker spinning around. And I do believe we can actually get that out of there. Watch it snap back. Now, those neodymiums. Whoa. There we go. There we go. Got it. Got it. <laughs> Beautiful. Now I can access the screws and actually get the head out. Yeah, that's one powerful magnet. So yeah, that's a keeper. So you can now see the coil, which is an interesting, uh, what, uh, trapezoidal kind of like, but it's bowed at the bottom and I don't know what shape that is. Does that officially have a name, that shape? But uh, yeah, that would be once again, highly engineered. Um, <laughs> it's probably not that shape by accident. So now we can actually lift that out of there and of course we're going to have the magnet on the bottom ta-da there's the entire head assembly wow isn't that fantastic yeah you can see the thickness of the coil there you can see all the turns on that and yep there's our other magnet assembly so does that just lift out comes out somehow all right let's have a quick look at the head under the Tagano microscope that's all yeah that's just the flat flex interface like that there's nothing else on there at all and uh, that's just a holder for all the flat flex. There's our head amplifier silicon. There you go, <laughs> because there wasn't the number of connections required to actually do that. And there we go. There's our head driver chip. So that's a chip on flex uh, technology. They've got the gunk around there just to keep the moisture out and whatnot. And uh, yeah, you can see all the traces coming in here from the head. And then there's only a few going out here, which goes across the flat flex to the main PCB. So of course you can't have the, uh, you know, the tiny output from the heads. I mean, the, the signal levels, of the, oh, ooh, careful. Yeah, I'm gonna break these anyway. Anyway, the signal levels from the head are incredibly small. Um, so yeah, um, you need a custom head amplifier ASIC there. There's nothing else on there. Oh, there's one, one bypass cap, and that's all she wrote. And there's our head drive uh, coil there, and that's it. There's no other feedback on the head drive coil by the looks of it. So, yeah, we've got all our test points here. And check this out, though. This is interesting. These large traces here seem to have, like, large little chunks taken out of them around the bend there. And I haven't seen that before. I, I can't see how that's sort of any controlled impedance type thing so I'm left to imagine that's a mechanical stress kind of thing on the flat flex I, I don't know um, if anyone knows for sure please leave it in the comments anyway isn't that beautifully machined I mean absolutely fantastic that's all machined in one block look at that that is not joined or anything right wow how do they do that that is remarkable Oh, geez, that's a bit how you doing. 
Check out the wires just going down to the coil. <laughs> oh no, there you go. Oh no, I thought that was soldered down there, but it's not. They just go into some um, insulated sleeve in there. Anyway, you can see the thickness of the coil there. There's lots of turns in that. Those playing along at home want to count that. Knock yourself out. Itself, the head plate, that's actually attached on the underside of, because this is all part of the big machined part, right? So that's actually, head's actually attached to the underside of that. So are these, these big test pads on the top? You can see this is going off to uh, some test pads here. And you can see that the trace is actually split around this gap in the um, in the head, in the part of the metal there. I'm not sure why that's the case. Is that aerodynamic reasons or something? Yeah, I can only assume that's aerodynamics. Anyway, there's our head. Might have to sacrifice one of them. Might have to... Well, yep, yeah, that one's gone. Oh, no! Oh, no! Come and guts are there. Believe it or not, that's actually maximum zoom. Now, you can see that the ferrite head... I mean, there's amazing material science technology going on inside these ferrite heads in here. So there's another close-up of the head. You can see how tiny that is compared to my fingerprint. <laughs> wow. Yeah, that's amazing. And yeah, it's all flat flex, of course. There's a lots of, uh, once again, there's lots of aerodynamics in this. There would be a lot of engineering that goes into the aerodynamics to, to make sure these heads actually... Uh, just float above the surface, so that's uh, yeah, that's really something. Wow! If you think you understand the every aspect of the engineering that goes into this, you're probably wrong. So like 40 years, 50 years of advancement in technology. I've still got somewhere the magnetic recording handbook. It's this thick, almost. Well, a lot of it's not obsolete, but. Uh, in terms of like manufacturing technology it would be so so yeah these heads are just amazing technology absolutely amazing so yeah there you go but yeah there's no feedback on that coil at all yeah that that is one machined piece isn't it wow <laughs> that's great <laughs> how much does it cost to churn out one of those any any machining experts out there is it, it, no, it'd have to be cast, wouldn't it? It'd have to be cast. You wouldn't machine that properly, right? In fact, it doesn't look like there's machining... Oh, no, there's machining marks on the top. For all the world, look like machining marks. Have they just, like, polished it off? I don't know if anyone knows. Is it a combination of cast and machine or something? I don't know, but that's... Yeah, that's... I guess that's the only way you can get the rigidity on, on that head and the arms and everything. It's absolutely remarkable. So yeah, there's not much in these things. It's uh, it's just the platters and the head assembly, and that's that's it. All the electronics is outside. Yeah, there we go. You can just pull that out. So we've got the matching uh, assemblies. I won't try and snap them together because uh, yeah, it could be quite dangerous. These are incredibly powerful, and of course, um, yeah, rare earth metals used in these. And well, I think uh, isn't China the dominant player in rare earth metals? Um, yeah, very precious resource. Trigger warning, look away now. I think I got it. Winner, winner. Chicken dinner. Wow, that was a real bastard, that one. Ta-da, there we go, we're in. There's our separator for each one. So, nothing on that one. Beautiful, look at that. I mean, <laughs> polished mirror. That's just incredible. Wow. Anyway, so that's one. Now we, there we go. That is not a magnet, uh, by the way. That's just like, that's just a machined brushed aluminium, is it? Something like that. Yeah, that's just a machined bracket. How precisely that has to be machined, I don't know. Anyway, our next one down also doesn't have any evidence of a head crash. Maybe we're not actually going to see That'll be disappointing. After all this, I'm going to be incredibly disappointed not to see a big gouge taken out and a big head crash. These are going to get increasingly hard to uh, take out, I suspect. Now, the third one looks okay too. Yep, no problems whatsoever. 
Oh, after all this effort, really? You gonna do that to me? None of them. I bet you none of them. Now, yep, none. Of, I reckon it's none of them. That's absolutely perfect. There's nothing wrong with that. I suspect we're gonna come a gutsy here. Lucky last. Ta da! There we go. Absolutely nothing wrong with any of those platters. So we haven't had a head crash. There's your five platters, don't they? Look, absolutely fantastic. Oh, now they've got fingerprints all over them. Ah, who cares? No, there's no evidence of a head crash whatsoever. And then we've got another uh, pad under there. I don't know. Is there some aerodynamics to that? I don't know. There's actually a significant amount of friction in that. I guess, once again, it had to be precisely engineered. There'd be a reason for that. And, uh, yeah, these pads, they would be for, you know, aerodynamic uh, reasons to keep, you know, the platter from uh, flapping around in the breeze or whatnot, um, I would guess. Or, that, you know, if it happens to wobble a little bit, maybe it touches the pad and doesn't touch any metallic surface so it doesn't get damaged because uh, they obviously don't need those in the middle. They don't need those uh, around these at all um but yeah these would be precisely engineered i mean look at i yeah you can see how they're just milled out how do they finish that i don't know the mechanical engineers out there like you can see the lip so that's that's really very nicely machined that's just a thing of beauty joy forever wouldn't be cheap to do that would it yeah, these platters here so precisely engineered I can't damn well slide them apart. Um, <laughs> I can't get them apart. I swear. What the? Oh, there we go. Got it. Got it. Wow. They're so precisely flat. The surface is so precisely engineered. Just can't do it. Unbelievable. Anyway, there you have it. That's a teardown of a Western Digital Red hard drive six terabyte jobby and uh five platter and of course uh that would be a uh, 10 heads a total oh yeah i miscounted those before so yes that's interesting but i didn't see the money shot we didn't get it we didn't get to see like a big um part of one of the platters gouged out there so that's disappointing so that earns a wah, 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 wah. so yeah i can only assume that there was something in the head drive mechanism that sort of made it do the large crunching noises and stuff like that because it was just so much louder than um like a normal drive i could hear it like on the other side of the lab it was incredible when it first happened um so yeah that's interesting but there you go i hope you enjoyed that it's a fascinating look inside a hard drive and i probably could have like got a new drive under warranty perhaps although as i said it was one month technically one month out from when i bought it about twenty six thousand something hours uh continuous operation and eventually come a guts all the others are fine though um no bad sectors at all so anyway i hope you enjoyed that fascinating look inside absolute marvel of modern uh physics electronics uh, packaging, uh, construction, testing, material science, all sorts, everything. Amazing technology goes into these hard drives. I couldn't even begin to um, scratch the surface of what <laughs> all the aspects of modern technology that go. There's probably not, an, not a single aspect of modern technology that is not inside a modern hard drive and manufacturing technology and physics material science and the whole works it's just absolutely incredible so hope you enjoyed that i certainly did if you did please give it a big thumbs up as always discuss down below catch you next time